All right, guys, so we're just going to start this morning into a wide leg child pose. So open your knees about mat wide distance. You can have your big toes touching, but make sure your toes are on top. And then when you're ready, you can extend your arms as far forward as you can and relax your forehead onto the floor. And just relax your forearms on the floor and let everything soak in into that position. Keep your eyes closed and just start taking some deep breath in and out through your nose. And just allowing yourself to soak in into the moment. And just noticing how your body feels this morning. Notice, do you feel a bit tense? Do you feel relaxed? Do you feel energized or a bit sleepy still on this Sunday morning? And just notice without any judgment how your breath feels. Allowing yourself to ground, to let go. And now from here, what we're going to do, we're going to walk both our hands towards the left side of our mat. Maybe be even on the outside of our mat and relaxing our forehead down. We're going to stretch the right side of our body. Keep taking deep breath in and out through your nose. And then slowly walking our hands towards the right side of our mat. And slowly coming back towards the center. Feel free to keep your eyes closed. Start walking your hands towards you to find a kneeling position. Keep bringing your knees in maybe and bringing your back upright. Rolling your shoulders back. Maybe bringing your hands in front of your heart center. Deep breath in and out. Beautiful. Now, if you'd like to set an intention for today's practice, make sure that you set an intention in the present tense as if it has already happened, or that you already have it, or that you have already done that intention. And start repeating it mentally a few times. Mm, beautiful. Gently releasing the hands, opening the eyes. Take a deep breath in, bring your hands up towards the sky. As you exhale, bring one hand onto the floor, doesn't matter which one, and bring the other hand up and over. See if you can start walking that hand a bit further away from you as you stretch the side of your body. Make sure that both sitting bones stay flat onto the floor. Beautiful. Maybe gazing up towards the sky. Breathing in, we're going to go back up. And we're going over towards the other side. Maybe walking that hands onto the other side. And relaxing, gazing up. Making sure you're not tensing the back of your neck. So maybe a little tuck of the chin to lengthen the back of your neck. Coming back towards the center. And breathing in, hands up. We're going to one twist, one on each side. So gaze over one shoulder, maybe one hand on the outside of your knee. And gaze back. And breathing in, back towards the center and towards the other side. Fabulous. Coming back towards the center and we release and find your R4. So make sure that your hands are about shoulder width distance and knees about the same distance. As we inhale, when you're ready, you're going to drop our belly down, open our chest and gaze up towards the sky. And as we exhale, going towards the other side, to our cap, navel towards your spine, shoulder blades towards the sky. And take another deep breath in, open your heart, gaze up, 
And keep moving here with your own breath into your cats and cow. We've got one more. And exhale, tucking in. For the next round, I invite you guys to bring your fingertips towards the side of a, your mat and the thumb pointing towards the front and keep moving to your cats and cow. This time, the fingertips pointing sideways. Just trying to warm up our spine here. And if you want to even take it a little bit further to warm your wrist, you can even bring the fingertips pointing towards the back, towards your knees, and the thumb towards the outside of your mat. And we do the same again, inhaling and exhaling into your cat. Feeling the different sensation in your wrist. If it's too much for your wrist, just come back to your normal grip onto the floor. And the last round, what we're going to be doing, we're going to make a fist with our hands. The thumb goes onto the outside of our knuckles and come onto your fist onto the floor. And again, maybe make sure the eye of the elbow, so the inside of the elbows are facing each other as you move to your cats and cow. I'm going to have a little play this morning with some um, hand balancing and inversion. So that's why it's important to warm up our wrist. And the reason why I use the word play is that we actually going to try and have fun doing it. But it's just a game. So it's just to play, have fun. If you don't have fun, um, you don't have to do it. That's the whole thing. Come back to your normal grip and try to spread your fingers as wide as possible. Press your knuckles down. Take a deep breath in into your cow. As you exhale, tuck your toes and find your way into your first downward dog of the day. So from here, make sure that you press your hands into the floor. Maybe bend your knees a little bit more to help you lift your sitting bones towards the sky and lengthen your spine. Take a deep breath in as you exhale. Maybe start bringing one heel towards the floor. Bend the other knee. And take another deep breath in. And as you exhale, go towards the other side. And again, swap. With every exhale... We change, inhale, and swap with the exhale. And again, we go one more on each side. And again. Coming back to our neutral downward dog, take a few deep breaths in here. And as we exhale, we're going to start walking our hands towards our feet and find a full forward at the end of our mat. And release your head down here. Feel free to bend your knees as much as you need to relax your chest onto your thighs. Maybe interlocking your arms and rocking from left to right. And staying here for a few breaths, maybe bouncing up and down or move your head, yes and no. Beautiful. Take another deep breath in here. As you exhale, release your fingertips onto the floor. Next breath in, very slowly start unrolling your back. Come to a standing pose. Take your time, lift up. Coming all the way up, bring your hands up and over your hands. Reach as high as possible. Join your palms together. And exhale, hands in front of your heart center into your samasthiti. Beautiful. Take a deep breath in, bring your hands up. And exhale, Samasiti. Beautiful. Right, so from here we start moving to our sun salutation. Make sure you ground your feet into the floor. Spread your fingers wide and close your eyes and just imagine your all flow of energy going down to the center of the earth to ground yourself. You can have a little bend in the knees if that feels okay. You can have the hands either in front of your heart center or maybe on the side of your body. Take another two deep breaths in, and as you exhale, feel the gravity pulling yourself down towards the earth. And last one. Beautiful. Next breath in, you can reopen your eyes, bring your hands up as far as you can, gazing up. And as you exhale, find your full forward, bending from the hips, coming all the way down to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift, roll your shoulders towards the sky, extend your spine, fingertips on your shin or on the floor, exhale, release down.
Gonna do one more if you want to as you inhale halfway lift. Can you bring your fingertips towards the front of your mat? Arms on each side of your ears. And release down and start walking your hands into your plank position towards the front of your mat. Your hands are right under your shoulders, not wider. And then make sure that you press against your knuckles against the floor. So the knuckles are not leaving the floor. Activate your core. Press your heel towards the back of your mat so you're not kind of like onto your tippy toes yet. Uh, we're going to go onto our tippy toes later on. Take one more deep breath in here, feeling the energy building up into our core. And last exhale here, drop your knees down, untuck your toes, find your chaturanga coming all the way down to the floor. Release your chest down. Bring your hands wider than your mat, fingertips onto the floor. Press into your fingertips, elbows are high. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, release all the way down. One more deep breath in, lifting up. And exhale, relax. We do one more time. Inhale. As you exhale, maybe swirl from left to right to come down and relax your spine, lengthen your spine. Bring your hands on each side of your rib cage, a bit further back than your shoulders. Find your first upward dog of the day. Press into your hands. If you want to come into a baby cobra first, you can. You can just press and lift and roll your shoulders back. If you want, press the hands against the floor to lift your hips and your legs off the floor. Only the top of the feet is touching the floor. Take one more deep in breath in here. Can you roll your shoulders back to make sure you, and bring them away from your ears? Make sure you're not resting into your shoulders. Activating your core, tuck your toes, lift your hips high, find your downward dog. One more, one deep breath in here, lift the right leg up towards the sky. Toes pointing down, extend the spine, extend your heel towards the sky, and exhale, release the foot down. Right leg goes up with the next inhale, sorry, left leg. <laughs> And exhale, release down. Take one deep breath. As you breathe out, bend your knees, look between your hands, and two big steps towards the front of your mat. Halfway lift with the inhale, roll your shoulders away from your ears, and relax. Make your way to standing, coming all the way up to standing. And some city hands in front of your heart center. Beautiful. We move to our second round of flow. Breathing in, bring your hands up. Find your fall forward. We're going to go slightly faster in this one. Halfway lift with the inhale. Plant your palms. Step back into your plank. Now your choice here if you want to move to your chaturanga on your toes or dropping your knees. Really up to you. If you want to stay into on your toes, this time we're going to rock forward. Lower down our chaturanga very slowly for the first one. Inhaling into our upward dog, rolling forward, shoulders away from the ears. And exhale, downward dog, bring your hips high. Beautiful. Staying here for four breaths. What, two more breaths in here. And as we exhale, we bend our knees, look between our hands, stepping or jumping towards the front. Halfway lift with the inhale, release down with the exhale. Coming all the way up to standing. Moving into our last round of sun salutation, we're going to go to sun salutation B. So bring your big toes, stop chin. You can have a little gap between your heels if you want to. As you breathe in, find your chair pose, squeeze your knees in, sit back, and lift your arms on each out of your ears. Make sure that your knees are not going further than your toes, so you're not into that position. Can you sit a little bit more as you bring your rib cage in, so you're not arching your back, you're trying to bring everything in. Bring your hands in front of your heart center with the exhale, left elbow on the outside of your right knee. Opening your chest, maybe gazing up towards the sky. Coming back up towards the center, hands up, exhale, left side. Open up, gaze up, keep the hips low. Coming back up towards the center and find your fall forward, releasing down. Halfway lift, fingertips towards the front if you want. Release down with the exhale, plant your palms, step or jump back into your chaturanga. 
If you are stepping, you land in the, into a plank, it can, and then you lower down. Upward dog with the inhale, downward dog with the exhale. Inhale, raise the right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Bend your knee and open your hips, stack your hips on top of each other. Try to open the right hip. Keep the right knee high, left right heel close to your bum. Extend the right leg back up, tag your curl in, bring your foot between your hands, find your warrior one, back heel flat on the floor, 45 degree, lift your arms up with the inhale. Land into that warrior, can you square your hips towards the front so the hips are on the open sideway, really towards the front, bring your ribcage in, arms up. Hands in front of your heart center. If you'd like to, can you twist into your warrior and, brun and bring your left elbow into the outside of your right knee, gazing up. One more breath. Lifting back up with the inhale, hands up. And find your vinyasa, hands goes on each side of your right foot. Right leg goes up towards the sky. And then find the vinyasa, so find your plank or three-legged plank. Lower down your vinyasa, your chaturanga. Upward dog with the inhale. And downward dog with the exhale. Doing great, guys. We're going straight towards the other side. Inhaling, left leg goes up. Bend the knee, open your hips. Keep the left knee high. Can you open your hips a little bit more, but keep your shoulders square towards the back of your mat. Extend the left leg back up. Target curl in, bring your knee between your chest and drop the foot down. Ground your back foot, 45 degree angle, lift up. Beautiful. Can you lift the inner arch of your back foot and plant the outer arch, the other side of the foot into the floor? Soak down a little bit more. Again, if you'd like to, hands in front of your heart center and right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Gazing up, twisting, using the pressure of the elbow against the knee to twist a little bit more. And coming back up with the inhale, hands up, in control. Take, take your time and move to your vinyasa. Hands frame the left foot. Left foot goes back up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Find your plank or three-legged plank. Lower down your chaturanga. Upward dog with the inhale. And downward dog. Fantastic. Staying here for a few deep breaths. And one more. As you exhale, next breath, bend your knees, look between your hands, stepping or jumping towards the front. Halfway lift with the inhale, release down with the exhale. Big toes touching, find your chair pose. One more time, squeeze the knees in, lift up. Maybe soaking a little bit more, hands in front of your heart center. If you'd like, twist towards the right side first, left elbow on the outside of your right knee. Open your arms if you'd like to deepen the stretch, maybe gaze up. Hands back towards the front, lift up with the inhale, hands up, and left side. At your own pace, follow your breath, open the arms, gaze up. Hands back towards the center. And up, and release into your samasthiti. Feel your legs warming up a little bit. Open your feet up our hips with distance. Hands on each side of your body, palms facing forward, and close the eyes. Just staying here and breathe. And notice how your breath feels. Notice the different sensation in your body whether you feel some movement of energy, some tinkling. And then we're gonna open our eyes, come back from relaxation. We're gonna start moving through our flow. Remember that this is your practice. If there's anything that I do that don't resonate with you this morning, you can come into a child pose or just skip any part, that's totally fine. Find the front of your mat, big toes touching. We're gonna go again into our chair pose. As we inhale, squeeze your knees and lift up with one breath in here. Straight away, we're folding forward, release them. 
halfway lift with the next inhale. Plant your palms, step or jump back into your plank. Chaturanga or straight into your downward dog if you prefer to skip some chaturanga. Inhale into your upward dog and exhale into your downward dog. Take a deep breath in, bring your right leg up towards the sky, open your hips. And then if you'd like to find your wild thing from here, you can drop your foot down behind you in control. Keep your hips high, reach towards the front with your right hand. Extending your body, extending, activating the fingers. Now bring your hand back onto the floor, find your three-legged dog, and straight away we're going to tag your curl in, drop the foot on the outside of your left side of your mat, find your fallen triangle. So we're pivoting onto the same foot. Release the hand down, we find a wild thing one more time if you'd like, if not, stay into your tree, we three-legged dog, we're rotating up and over, wild thing. And last fall in triangle. Having a letter play here, rotating on our left foot. Hands up. Release the hand down, find your tree, leg a dog, right leg up. Tag your curl in, find your warrior one with the inhale, back foot flat on the floor, lift up. Open straight away into your warrior two with the exhale. Activating your front leg by bending the right knee, reach fingertips forward and back, gaze towards the front. Bring your rib cage in, core engage. Flip your front palm, reach the right hand up towards the sky and breathe here. Extend your fingertips, keep the right knee bent. As we exhale, side angle, so elbow on top of your knee. If your hips are already open, if you'd like to, you can even bring the foot in the inside of your foot onto the floor. So depends where you are at with your hips. Reverse the warrior again, lifting up. And as we exhale, we bring our hands on the inside of our right foot onto the floor. Find your lizard pose, so come onto your tippy toes with your back foot. Inhaling, extending your spine. As you exhale, you might want to drop your back knee down, untuck your toes, and crunch down. You can do that with your back foot active if you prefer, with the knee off the ground or the knee onto the ground. Just trying to open our hips here. And we're going to come back up, tuck our toes, lift your left knee. Ground your hands onto the floor. Can you lift the right leg up towards the sky? And with the next exhale, we're going to bring the elbow and knee together. Right knee to right elbow. Going back up towards the sky. We're doing the same movement. Right knee to right elbow. Now, if you'd like to deepen the stretch or challenge you a little bit more, you might want to bend the elbows, open the leg to the side. Maybe, maybe find a quick hand balancing here by lifting your left leg off the floor. Going back towards your three-legged dog and finding your warrior one one more time. Dropping the foot down and lift up. Warrior two. We're doing the same flow slightly faster. Reverse the warrior. And side angle. Elbow on top of your knee or hands on the inside of your foot. Reverse your warrior. And hands on the inside of your foot, lizard pose. Maybe flying lizard if you know how to do it. Come into your lizard. You might want to walk your hands back and lift if you're used to it. If not, just stay onto your forearms here with the knee off or on the mat. It doesn't matter. And coming back onto our hands. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, right leg goes up. Find your vinyasa or your downward dog. Up to you if you want to come straight into your downward dog by dropping the right foot down. If you want to move to your vinyasa, rock forward, lower down, upward dog, and downward dog. Now from here, I invite you to bring both knees down onto the floor, into your child pose. Up to you if you want to bring the knees in or wide, and just sitting back onto your heels, forehead down, and relax here. Just taking a few deep breaths to allow our body to integrate what just happened. 
You might want to notice how your breath feels, how your legs feel, how your arms, your hips. It's a good time to scan your body and just noticing what's going on inside. And we've got another three deep breath in here, using that time to just recenter. Now very slowly with the next inhale, start walking your hands towards your knees, coming back to a kneeling. We're gonna find one stretch on each side, inhaling hands up. As we did at the beginning, sorry, a twist, we're going gaze over one shoulder, doesn't matter each one, we're twisting towards one side maybe pressing the hand against our knee, gazing back. Coming back towards the center with the breath in, going towards the right side, or left if you did right first, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and coming back up, find your downward dog, release the hands down, walk them towards the front. If you wanna to move to one cat and cow here before going into your downward dog, you might wanna do it, open your chest, gaze up and then tuck in and one more breath in and tuck your toes downward dog uh, take three deep breath in here maybe we take two cleansing breath out of those three breath together so take a deep breath in through your nose as you exhale open your mouth let go through the mouth Take another deep breath in and release. Beautiful. Next, exhale, bend your knees, look between your hands, step or jump or float towards the front. Half we lift with the inhale, release down with the exhale. Find your chair pose, breathing in. Samastiti with the exhale, hands in front of your heart. Fabulous. We're going to move to that same flow we just did. So we did the right side. This time it's going to be with the left leg. Breathing in, find your chair pose one more time. Lifting your chest up. And relax, fall forward. Halfway lift. Plant your palms, step or jump back, up to you. Move to your vinyasa, so upward dog. And downward dog. As we inhale, we're gonna raise the left leg up towards the sky as high as possible. Bend your knee and open your hips. Find your wild thing or stay into this three-legged dog stretch. So up to you if you wanna drop the foot behind you, reach the, front, the hand towards the front, palm facing down. And release that hand onto the floor, pivot to come into your fallen triangle. So the left knee comes up and over, drop the foot on the outside of the right side of your mat, raise the right arm up. Keep the hips high, release the right hand onto the floor, we're pivoting again, finding our right wild thing, or staying into your three-legged dog, up to you. And last fallen triangle with the exhale, hand onto the floor, Pivot the knee up and over, drop the foot on the right side, lift your right arm up. Release the hand down, raise the left leg up towards the sky, three legged dog, and find your warrior one with the exhale, hug your curl in, drop the foot, ground your back foot, lift up with the inhale. As we exhale, warrior two, open your hips, left hand forward, right hand back. Activate your fingertips as if someone was trying to pull your hands away from you and drop your shoulders down. Gaze forward. Flip your front palm, reverse the wire. Left hand up. Keep your left knee bent, right leg active. Side angle with the exhale, elbow on top of your knee. Left elbow and left knee together. Or if you want the left hand in the inside of your left foot, right hand goes up and over, maybe gazing up into the inside of your right palm. And lifting all the way up, reverse your warrior one more time with the inhale. As we exhale, cartwheel your hands down in the inside of your left foot. Find your lizard pose, come on onto your tip of the toes with your back foot and again feel free to drop your back knee if you want and untuck your toes and just relax 
maybe your forearm down or just bend the elbows a little bit wherever you are at into your lizard. Really up to you which variation. If you prefer staying active, keep the, ne le, the right knee off the mat. Come back onto your hands for the next inhale. Tuck your, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee. The left knee gonna go up towards the sky. In control with the inhale. Left knee to your left elbow as we tag your curl in. In control it slowly, we're going back up. Now again, either just bring the left knee to your left elbow. If you'd like to lower yourself down, open the leg to the side and maybe finding your balance by lifting the right leg off the floor, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> and going back up. <laughs> Beautiful. Find your warrior one one more time. Drop the foot down. Lift up. We're going into our floor again. So warrior two with the exhale. Flip your front palm. Reverse the warrior. Side angle. Utita Pashvatana with the exhale. Elbow on top of your knee. Or hand in the inside of your foot. Gazing up. Reverse the warrior. Lift up. And as we exhale, target, uh, rotate your hands down onto the inside of your foot. Maybe find your lizard again or flying lizard. So up to you again which variation you want to take. Whether you take it the flying lizard, bringing the hands back, fingertips on the floor, off the floor, or just relaxing down and sh stretching your hips. One more breath. Come back onto your hands if you're crunching down. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, left leg goes up. Find your vinyasa or your downward dog. Up to you. Release down your chaturanga. Upward dog with the inhale. And downward dog. And again, we're going to find a quick relaxing pose here. Dropping the knees down. Untuck your toes. Child pose here. Forehead down. Same principle here. Just using that time to relax and release. Letting go a little bit more with every exhale. Two more deep breath in here. Guys, now is a good time as well to remember your intention you had set at the beginning of the practice. And slowly coming onto your hands, lift up, hands towards you. Draw your knees in, find your downward dog. So tuck your toes and lift your hips. Maybe walk your dog a little bit. Mm, two more deep breaths in here. If you want to take two cleansing breaths again with me, take a deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, letting go. And again, deep breath in. And release. And then we make our way towards the front. So bend your knees, look between your hands, walk, jump or float towards the front. Halfway lift with the inhale. Release down with the exhale. Make your way up to standing all the way up. And hands in front of your heart center, Samastiti. Beautiful. Now we're going to go back into our chair. I swear, this is the last time we're going into our chair. If you want to find, we're going to go into sideways stretch. If you want to have a play with your side crow, I invite you to do so. If you do not wish to go with side crow, you can just come into your chair and twist or just stay into your chair. If it's too much, find a relaxing, maybe uh, fall forward. So Uttanasana, just this one if that is too much. Now when you're ready, inhaling, bring your hands towards the floor and find your chair pose. Straight away, we're going to bring our hands in front of your heart center and twist towards the left or right side. It doesn't matter. <laughs> now, if you want, you can open your arms as we did before. If you want to bring your hands onto the floor and find your, your side crow, 
using your knees onto the outside of your elbow and lift the feet off the floor, finding your balance here. Any variation of side crow you want to take. <laughs> and then very slowly take one more breath in here, find your way back to your chair and we're going to go play towards the other side. So left elbow on the outside of your right knee. Maybe just finding a twist, maybe bring your hands down if you used to do so, and finding your balance here. And coming back towards the center, chair pose last round, and fall forward. Staying into our fall forward. Using any variation of full forward you like, if you just want to stay here or interlock your arms, maybe bring your hands behind your back, stretching your shoulders, your arms after we've done a bit of a hand balancing. One more breath. Then release the hands, half relift. Find your chaturanga, find your vinyasa, step or jump back. Find your downward dog or move to your floor at your own pace. And three deep breath here. And then we're going to go into last round of floor on each side with some small variation. So just pay attention if that is too much for you and you want to just rest on your child pose at any time. If not, raise your right leg up towards the sky and find your wild thing. Dropping the foot down, lifting your hips high. One inhale here, flipping up and over into your fallen triangle, maybe keeping the right foot off the mat this time, just hovering it off your mat. Coming back up into your three-legged dog. Right knee to right elbow. And again, if you want to find your hand balancing here, bend your elbow, bend the right leg to the side and lift your left foot off the mat. Coming back into your three-legged dog with the inhale. While you're, two, while you're one, sorry, drop the foot between your hands, lift up with the inhale. While you're two with the exhale. Reverse your while your right hand goes up. Side angle with the exit, right elbow on top of your right knee, or the foot in the inside. Maybe finding your bind this time by bringing your hands behind your back, interlocking your hands behind your back. Again, these are just variation, guys. Reverse your wire one more time. And as we exhale this time, we find just a relaxing lizard. So bring your hands on the each side of your, uh, sorry, on the inside of your right foot. Drop your knee down, untuck your toes, and just again relax. You can either, if you want, find a little twist by bringing the right hand back towards the back of your mat, maybe grabbing your left foot, bending your left knee, gazing over your right shoulder. These are just options. If you want to stay into your normal lizard, you can. Release the hand, the foot, back into the inside of your foot. Tuck your toes, lift your back knee. Right leg goes up towards the sky. And downward dog or vinyasa. Fantastic. Straight away, the left leg going to go up. Got one more round, guys. Find your wild thing, bend your knee, drop the foot behind you. Lift your hips high, gaze towards the front. Flip up and over into your fallen triangle, or maybe just the foot hovering off the mat, not touching the floor if you want to. And back into your three legged dog. Gonna find our flying split. So bring in left knee and left elbow together. Either stay here or lower yourself down. And back up. Find your warrior one. With the inhale. Warrior two with the exhale. Reverse. And side angle. Pashvottanasana. Find your bind if you want to. If not, just stay here.
Last round, reverse your warrior. And hands in the inside of your left foot, either for your lizard, or maybe last twist here, bring your left hand back, grab the top of your right foot with your left hand. And then from here, slowly release the foot, hands down, and we're gonna go into our last vinyasa if you want to, if not, straight into your downward dog. Tuck your back toes, lift your right knee, left leg up. And either downward dog or vinyasa. And beautiful, guys. Now from here, we're gonna find another child pose or puppy pose. So it's up to you if you wanna bring your knees down on top your toes, keep your hips high and just walk your hands as far forward as you can, keeping the hips and the knees um, in a straight line, so vertical, and either gazing forward with your chin on the floor or the forehead down. Now if that's too much for your shoulder this morning, just find a normal child pose by relaxing your forehead and hips down. Now, if you can stay into your heart melting pose, puppy pose for a few breaths, and then go, I'll let you know when to go into your child pose. Another one breath in here. And then just sit back into your child pose, maybe walk your hands back and grab your heels with your hand. Now very slowly from here, come into your kneeling position, lifting up and extend your legs in front of you, find a sitting, Dandasana. Make sure your both sitting bones are anchored into the floor, you can flex your feet to activate your legs. Now we're going to have two different variations of stretch here. Now the first one we're going to be doing, we're going to bring the left foot with the, in the inside of your right thigh, keep your um, hip square towards the front, inhaling, bring your hands up, and as we exhale, we find a full forward by grabbing either the outside of our legs or our foot, and just finding full forward here to stretch our armstring. Mm, one more breath in here. And lifting up with the inhale. We're going to twist our navel towards your left knee. Bring the hands on each side of your left knee and just finding a little fold down over your knee. You don't have to go all the way down. We want to make sure the right sitting bones stay flat on the floor. Just a gentle twist and fall down. Coming back up, and for the, ne the next one, I'm going to be facing you, so you guys stay the same way. But you want to bring the foot, so the outside of your foot, into your arms, and we're just going to, what we call cradle the baby. So wrapping our arms around our leg, and from here, you might want to rock from left to right, keep your back upright. And this is going to lead you for a last round, if you want to, to hand balancing. If you do not want to have a play, that's totally fine. Just stay here into that stretch. If you do want to have a play with your uh, figure eight, you're going to bring the, the, your leg, if possible, on top of your shoulder and bring your hands on each side of your hips. Now from here, can you hook your feet together and shift your weight onto your hands, maybe lifting your hips off the floor. And eventually we want to be able to open the legs to the side as we bend our elbows. Now, these are just options. Wherever you are, maybe you just want to stay into that variation. Stay here and just see if you can lift your hips off the floor or go into the full hook and lift your hips. So just decide wherever you are at now. And then we're going to release and go towards the other side. So we did the left foot bend. So now we're going to bend the right foot. And same principle here. We're going to inhale. Hands goes up. As we exhale, navel towards our left leg and finding our full forward here, stretching our, maybe our hips and maybe our hamstring, the back of our leg, side of our body. And trying to let go with every exhale.
Coming back with the inhale, same principle, we're going to bring our navel facing our right knee, the one that is bent, and just finding here a little fold down, fingertips on the floor, or the palm flat if that's easier for you. Make sure that the left hip stays onto the floor. Coming back up with the inhale, spine is long, and find your baby here. So bring the outside of your right foot in the inside of your left elbow. Interlock your arms around your leg. Bring your shoulders back to give. Bring your back up right, and maybe rock from left to right. Just trying to open our hips, create a bit of space here to allow us to do our last hand balancing. Bring that foot over your right shoulder, hands on each side of your hips. And again, you can either just stay here, maybe bring your hips off the floor, maybe hook your feet and bring your hips off the floor, or go into your full variation of figure eight by bending the elbows and opening the legs towards the right side. One more breath. And coming back. To sitting, beautiful. Extend your legs, shake your legs. Maybe move your knees left and right. You guys did great. And then find a laying down position. So when you're ready, you might want to rock back and forth into, tuck into a little ball. And rock back and forth. Maybe last round and we find a laying down position with our knees towards our chest. And just staying here for a few breaths. And breathing and allowing our body to completely relax and let go. Finding from here our um, bridge pose. So we're going to bring our feet onto the floor as close as possible so you are able to touch your heel with the tip of your fingers. And then with the next inhale, press your arms against the floor to lift your hips off the floor. Now here, you might want to stay here. If you want to, you want to bring your hands behind your back, interlock your fingers, roll your shoulders under, keep your hips high. Maybe squeeze your knees in a little bit more, activate your inner thigh. The knees are not touching, but we just want to make sure we activate the inner thigh. One more breath. Can you bring your hips a bit higher? And then slowly releasing your hands, your shoulders, and come all the way down to the floor. Bring the sole of your feet together. Open your knees wide. Find your relaxation here. You can have the hands on each side of your body, or maybe one palm on your belly, one palm on your heart. And then gently bring your knees back in. Now for the next round of bridge, we're going to go into a second round. I'm going to give it um, an option to go into an inversion. If you do not wish to go into that inversion into the bridge, what I'll ask you to do, if, if that's not for you, to, it's just to come into your legs up the wall 90 degree. Um, it's actually the name of the pose. You don't actually go against the wall. <laughs> You're just going to bring your legs up 90 degree. If you do not wish to go into the inversion, we're going to go into our bridge. If you're happy to give it a try, um, it's going to be slight, slightly more challenging. So bring your hips off the floor. As always, you might want to interlock. Actually, you do need to interlock your hands and bring your shoulders under for this one. Now from here, I, keep, I want you to keep the hips high. Can you keep the shoulders roll under, but release the hands and bring the five fingertips, so even the thumb towards the outside of your hips. So don't, make sure that your thumbs are not um, under your lower back, but towards the outside of your hips. Now from here, we are supported. So can you bring your one leg up towards the sky and breathe here, keep the, the leg activated. Maybe either point your toes or flex the foot, doesn't matter as long as it's active. Release down slowly, and we do the other side. Now, again, if you do not wish to come into those variations of bridge, just bring your hips down and just bring your legs up. The idea is just to go into an inversion. 
Release your, le your leg down. Now, if you wish to go into both legs at the same time, you want, might want to start just to bring both knees towards your chest first and see if you can extend the legs. Now, these are just an option. You do not have to do so. And maybe start lowering down, knees down, and maybe one leg at a time. Bring the feet down. Release your hands. Release your shoulders. Come all the way down to the floor. Knees to your chest. Give yourself a hug. Maybe rock from left to right. And then open your arms wide. Sh shuffle your hips towards the left side of your mat and drop your legs towards the right side of the mat. Find your twist, gaze over your left hand. Closing your eyes maybe and trying to let go completely. Every exhale, feel that you let the gravity pulling you down closer to the floor. Slowly make your way back towards the center and go towards the left side. Shuffle your hips towards the right side, left knee towards the left. Gaze over your right hand. Coming back slowly again towards the center, knees towards your chest, give yourself a hug. Maybe this time tucking your head into a tiny little ball, squeezing in. And we find from here our Shavasana. So we're going to extend the legs about mat wide. Bring your hands on each side of your body. Scoop your pelvic floor a little bit so your lower back is flat on the floor. Maybe a little tuck of the chin, shoulders away from your ears, and closing the eyes. We're going to stay here for a few minutes, so I invite you to try to stay connected with your breath. Every time your mind starts to wonder, thinking about anything else but being here in the present, just remember that every thought can wait a few more minutes. And what is really important is just to stay here right now in the present moment. Keep taking deep breath in. Can you lengthen your breath? Maybe breathe in a little bit deeper.
staying focused and in present, deepening your breath and staying here in the moment. Very slowly from here, start bringing awareness back into your body. Move your toes and your fingers. Move your wrist, your ankle. Move your head left and right. And bring your legs touching each other. Bring your hands together, interlock your fingers. Bring your hands over your head, palms facing away from you and stretch from the tip of your toes to the tip of your fingers. Stretch and extend your body. A little bit more and release and roll on to the right side of your body. So laying down on the right side of your body. Keeping your eyes closed and just staying here a few breaths. Can you keep your eyes closed and very slowly with the next inhale, start making your way back up, sitting facing the front of your mat. And keeping your back upright, shoulders back and down. Can you bring your hands together in front of your heart center? Keeping your eyes closed, I wanted to finish this practice with a little quote that I found that was quite accurate to this morning practice, which is, because this morning was, might have been challenging for some of you, maybe not, but there was a bit of challenge here and there. And, and it's a be beautiful metaphor with life, and it says... Um, when you face difficulties, when you have difficult times, know that challenges are not sent to destroy you. They are sent to promote, increase, and strengthen you. And I thought that was a beautiful thought to finish this morning practice. Take another deep breath in. As you exhale, bow your head down. As you open your eyes, gazing at the tip of your fingers. Inviting gratitude into our day. If you have gratitude towards yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit, towards Mother Nature for the gorgeous day around uh, ahead of us, so the sun, the nature, the fresh air. And I must stay towards all the yogi. Namaste. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, it's lovely to have you in practice with you this morning. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed the class, please subscribe and give me a little like, thumb up. Um, that will help me reach out to more people, people that might be into yoga, want to learn more, or just want to practice more often from home. So please, um, that'd be awesome support for, for me. Also, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my future class, check in the description below. Uh, there will be a... Um, a link where you can put your name and your email and you receive a little email every time I've got a new video on, which is at least once a week. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.